The series begins with a woman named Yami Chong, who is having lunch with her co-workers. At that time, she's just quietly listening to them talk about a club organized by their office. Mi Chong, who doesn't know much about it, gets invited by her colleague, Ji Wei, to go bowling later that night. But it's tricky for Mi Chong to join in because her house is far from the office. Meanwhile, her older sister, Yam Ki Chong, is having dinner with a friend. The two sisters text each other to make sure they'll go home together, because they'll be getting back late tonight. On the other hand, Mi Chong, who was hanging out with her colleagues, decided to say goodbye and head home early because it was getting late at night. She walked over to the restaurant where her older sister was waiting. When she arrived, she sat down next to her sister and listened to her story about a man she had met. Ki Chong, her sister, seemed upset because it turned out the man was a widower with a child. She also mentioned that the man would prioritize his daughter above everything else. But for Ki Chong, the child wasn't a big deal because it wasn't her own child. So if they got married, things would get even more complicated. Upon hearing this, their two friends quickly hushed her because they realized that Tae Hoon, a widower who was eating with his daughter, was sitting nearby. A little while later, Kong saw and their sister, joined Tae Hoon and gave a birthday gift to her nephew. Feeling a bit embarrassed, Ki Chong's friends said goodbye and left. Ki Chong and Mi Chong got up to leave as well, but before they left, Mi Chong gave a friendly salute to Tae Hoon because she recognized him as a co-worker at her workplace, even though they were on different teams. On the other hand, there's Nam Chung Hee, and he's having a heated argument with his girlfriend. He's pretty frustrated because it seems like decisions are being made without him, and he's also got this feeling that his girlfriend might be seeing someone else. Soon after, the three siblings decide to take a taxi back home, each lost in their own thoughts about their problems. The next day, everyone is caught up in their own activities. Mi Chong is helping her mom prepare food and drinks for the trip to the fields. Ki Chong, still thinking about what happened the night before, finally decides to go to the salon. Meanwhile, the rest of them are busy assisting their parents with work in the fields. After a while of working, they all take a break and have some food. But there's this guy named Mr. Gu, who looks deep in thought as he gazes at the scenery around. Chum He then asks his dad if he can buy a car, thinking it's more economical than using public transport. However, this makes his dad really upset because Chum He had previously taken a car loan and couldn't make the payments. In the evening, Mi Chong's mom asked her to tell Mr. Good to come to work at 9 o'clock the next morning. Mi Chong then left with a bowl of food for Mr. Gu. After that, she and Chung He went to a cafe owned by their friend Du Wan. It turns out, both Du Wan and Chung He had something in common that they were both heartbroken because they got dumped by women. The three of them chatted about their lives in Sunpo village. In fact, Chung He and Du Wan felt like they didn't quite fit in with those who were born in Seoul. The following day as Mi Chong was heading to work, she noticed that Mr. Gu had already arrived, even though it was only 7 in the morning. Mi Chong was a bit confused but continued on her way, passing by him. When she got to the office, Mi Chong talked to her boss about her obligation to join the office club. Her boss explained that it would be better for Mi Chong to build closer relationships with her colleagues to improve her work efficiency. Meanwhile outside, Tae Hoon was having a conversation with his colleague named Sung Min. They were both waiting for their turn to discuss their club participation obligations. After Mi Chong finished her discussion, Tae Hoon went in to talk to the boss. There he explained that he couldn't join any clubs because he needed to take care of his daughter. Meanwhile, Mi Chong is giving a document to Jun Ho. Afterward, she checks her phone and sees a message in the group chat saying her team is going somewhere. There, Mi Chong responds, explaining that she can't join them because her house is far away. From a distance, she hears Jun Ho correcting a mistake in her document. This makes her cry when she reads his handwritten note asking her to proofread the document. The next day, Mi Chong overhears her teammates talking. They say she's pretty but lacks charm. This makes her think that no matter where she's from, people might not like her. She starts to wonder about her true self. On the other hand, Chung Hee is at a shop and gets invited to eat by the owner. The owner mentions that if Chung Hee gets married in the future, he won't forget to invite him. Mi Chong is informed by a bank officer that her credit card bill will be due soon. She's really confused because she didn't know that Ki Chong took out a large loan without her knowledge. Finally, Mi Chong decides to contact Ki Chong, but she doesn't get a response. In the evening, Ki Chong went home without feeling guilty. Later, a man named Suk Jung Hoon arrived with a drink. They were all gathering at Mi Chong's house for a camping event, and they started discussing their problems. However, Mi Chong mostly stayed quiet and listened to them. The next day, 
Mi Chong went to see Mr. Gu at his home. She asked him about a bank bill that had arrived in the mail. She also requested that Mr. Gu keep the letter a secret from their family. Mr. Gu was the one who rushed to get the letter when the mailman arrived, and there were two identical letters from Mi Chong, which confused the mailman. Mr. Gu took the letter, read it, and then placed it in a cupboard before leaving. While he was at the minimarket, Mr. Gu spotted Mi Chong walking by. He followed her and informed her about the letter. Mi Chong's mother, who happened to be outside at the time, noticed this and asked Mi Chong about Mr. Gu's unusual behavior. In response, Mi Chong explained that she had asked Mr. Gu to return a bowl that had been used for his food. Meanwhile, Ki Chong, who was at the office, received advice from a colleague to move to a new house. On another note, Mi Chong brought some food over to Mr. Gu. While there, she took the letter from him and read it. After reading it, Mi Chong folded it and asked if she could leave it there because she didn't feel safe having it at home. It was also revealed that the person who borrowed money from the bank was not Ki Chong but a male friend from Mi Chong's past. The next day at the office, there was a group meal, and each person was assigned to a table. Surprisingly, Mi Chong ended up at the same table as Tae Hoon and Song Min, who were all individuals not interested in joining office clubs. After they finished eating, Mi Chong found herself in the same elevator as Tae Hoon. She apologized on behalf of Ki Chong for the incident a few days ago. In another room, Ki Chong was feeling quiet as she watched another colleague chatting with Miss Lee about a lottery they received from Park Jinyu. Ki Chong felt left out because she was the only one who didn't get a lottery from Park Jinyu. She then confided in a co-worker about her feelings and expressed her desire for a supportive presence in her life to listen to her stories and complaints about life's challenges. On the other hand, Mi Chong was on the phone with someone. She was told that Chan Hyuk, the person who owed money, had run away to Thailand because he still owed money to other people, and nobody could contact him. In Thailand, Chan Hyuk also planned to meet Shin Young, his ex. When Mi Chong heard this, she couldn't find the right words to say. She felt really confused because she had to pay off debts from other people. As Mi Chong was walking home, she saw her parents rushing over to Mr. Gu. She followed them and found Mr. Gu with a nosebleed. Her father immediately took him to the hospital. During dinner, Mi Chong's mother shared what happened to Mr. Gu. She thought he might have fallen while drunk, causing his nose to hit the floor. Besides that, she also mentioned Mr. Gu's mysterious background because he never clearly answered when asked about it. The next day, Mi Chong gave new documents to Jin Ho, but it turned out there were still many errors. Then, Young Ki told Mi Chong that she had found a new club that would be perfect for someone who likes to be alone. Hearing this, Mi Chong burst into tears and expressed how tired she was of her life. She felt like no matter how hard she worked, nothing would change, and nobody would even like her. When she got back home, Mi Chong approached Mr. Gu, who was drunk. She asked him why he drank every day. He replied that he felt like there was nothing else he could do apart from getting drunk. Mi Chong suggested that if he wanted to do something besides drinking, he could worship or pray. She felt that her heart was always empty and wanted to fill it up, especially with winter approaching, so she could experience a full life, even just once. Meanwhile, Mr. Gu told Mi Chong to go home and didn't want to grant her request. He found it strange that she admired him, even though she didn't know his true name and background. Mr. Gu himself was a foreigner who had moved to their village without revealing his real name and background. Surprisingly, he decided to look up the meaning of the word puja after Mi Chong's words. Back at the office, a co-worker asked why Mi Chong hadn't gone home yet, as she usually left on time. She responded that she didn't want to go home, and her co-worker suggested going to a cafe instead. At the cafe, Mi Chong didn't enjoy being with her friends at first. However, she suddenly remembered Mr. Gu's advice about resolving her debt problem promptly and being cautious around men who deceive women by knowing who will remain silent when they distort the facts. The following day, Mi Chong continued trying to contact Xin Yang but received no response. After giving documents to Jun Ho, Mi Chong returned to her seat and read messages on her phone. She became annoyed by insulting messages from her male friend, and without realizing it, she made a rude comment that offended Jun Ho. He approached Mi Chong and asked about it, and she explained that the words were not directed at him, but at the message she had been reading at that moment. At the convenience store, Ki Chong bumped into Jin Yu and struck up a conversation. Ki Chong bravely asked Jin Yu why he was the only one who had never won the lottery when all the other employees had. Upon hearing this, Jin Yu realized that Ki Chong had never won a lottery from him before. Jin Yu apologized, explaining it was unintentional, and to make it up, 
he took Ki Chong to a cafe. There Ki Chong shared her feelings of always feeling rejected by men. She asked Ji Nu why no man seemed to like her, even though she tried her best to impress them. In response, Ji Nu suggested that it might not be that men didn't like her, but perhaps Ki Chong just hadn't found the right man yet. He thought Ki Chong might be better matched with someone who is more masculine and focused on their own life. During lunchtime, Mi Chong, Tae Hoon, and Sung Min received a call from their boss to discuss which club they should join. While they were thinking about how to avoid the call, Mi Chong came up with the idea of starting a club, just for the three of them, which called a Liberation Club. Upon hearing that, Tae Hoon and Sung Min agreed to create the club. When Ki Chong got home, she asked Chung Hee why she always felt like she was being dumped, even though it was actually Chung Hee who had broken up with her. Chung Hee's selfish behavior made Ki Chong believe that any woman would want to break up with a boyfriend like him. Annoyed, Chung Hee went to see Mr. Gu at home and invited him to hang out occasionally, hoping they could become good friends. However, Mr. Gu remained silent, and Chung Hee left. The following day, Mi Chong headed to the office. While walking, she passed by Mr. Gu, causing her to stop and turn to him. Mi Chong suggested that they should greet each other when they meet from now on. After they finished eating, Mi Chong's mother complimented Mr. Gu, saying that her husband was impressed with his work skills. She mentioned that it was the first time her husband had praised someone other than Mi Chong, even though he had always praised Mi Chong's work in the past. Mi Chong's mother also recalled how, when Mi Chong was younger, she used to help her father with various tasks, both in the fields and the warehouse. Shortly after Ki Chong and Chung, he entered the house while arguing. Inside, Ki Chong picked up a slipper and threw it at Chung Hee. But unfortunately, because Chung-hee was looking down, the slipper accidentally hit Mi Chong in the head. At that time, Mi Chong stayed silent and calmly picked up the slipper and tossed it outside. In the evening, Chung-hee met with Mr. Gu to have a conversation. There, Chung-hee talked about Mi Chong, mentioning that she rarely got angry but could be quite intimidating when she was upset. He advised Mr. Gu to be cautious when dealing with Mi Chong. In the meantime, one of Mi Chong's friends called over some colleagues and displayed the Liberation Club and its members on her computer, which made everyone laugh. They then asked Mi Chong about the club, but Mi Chong felt confused because she hadn't yet come up with a plan for her club. She explained that she wanted to break free from an invisible but confining cage in her life. On another note, a customer scolded Mi Chong's father because the cupboard was too expensive and he asked him to take it apart. Helpless, her father left with Mr. Gu driving the car. However, upon arriving home, Mr. Gu suddenly returned to the customer's house. There, Mr. Gu asked the customer for payment, and it's unclear what Mr. Gu did or said, but the customer eventually agreed to pay. Mr. Gu then returned and immediately handed the money to Mi Chong's mother. During dinner, the mother was curious about how Mr. Gu had managed to get the customer to pay, but her husband remained silent. Meanwhile, Mr. Gu, on his way to buy drinks, suddenly recalled his past. The next day, Jin Yu offered a lottery ticket to Ki Chong as a way to apologize. Ki Chong initially refused because she thought the lottery prize was too large, but Jin Yu insisted and eventually, she accepted the lottery ticket. On the other hand, a sudden rainstorm with lightning frightened other employees but Mi Chong, Tae Hoon and Sung Min remained unfazed. Mi Chong even mentioned that she felt comfortable in such conditions. Afterward, they gathered at a cafe for their first Liberation Club meeting. They sat side by side without facing each other because they believed it would make them feel more comfortable. During the meeting, they discussed various topics, especially the idea of freedom. Meanwhile, Mi Chong, who was enjoying the rain, noticed Mr. Gu drinking alcohol while looking at the heavy rain. Suddenly, a lightning strike caused a power outage. Mi Chong became concerned about Mr. Gu and rushed to him, urging him to go inside the house. However, Mr. Gu remained silent and ignored Mi Chong's words so she took his hand and led him into the house. The following day, while they were out in the field picking vegetables, Mi Chong and the others suddenly faced strong winds that blew her hat far away. Chung Hee told Mi Chong to fetch it herself, but surprisingly Mr. Gu stood up and offered to retrieve it. He ran quickly and leaped to grab the hat. After getting the hat, Mr. Gu jumped back and his actions suggested that he was starting to warm up to Mi Chong. He handed the hat to Chung Hee and then resumed his work. Chung Hee was impressed by Mr. Gu's jump and caught up with him after returning the hat to Mi Chong. During their conversation, Chung Yi marveled at Mr. Gu's jumping skills and asked for his real name. He even speculated that Mr. Gu might be a national high jump athlete since some national athletes share the same surname. 
After they finished eating, Chung Gi continued to ask while following Mr. Gu. But this began to annoy Mr. Gu, who eventually stopped and asked him to be quiet. In the evening, Mi Chong was having dinner when her father realized they were out of mosquito coils. Mi Chong noticed this and decided to go buy some. On her way to the store, she couldn't stop thinking about Mr. Gu, which left her feeling very confused. On one hand, Mr. Gu had always been kind to her, but on the other hand, he had recently become distant. Meanwhile, Mi Chong's mother overheard Chung He and his friend's conversation and suggested they should get married. When Mi Chong returned from the mini market, she encountered Mr. Gu coming out of his house. There she offered him a drink, which he accepted. As he was about to leave, Mr. Gu asked Mi Chong if she believed that they would both change when spring arrived. In response, Mi Chong said that they would change if they cared for each other, because based on her experience, people change after doing something they'd never done before. Mr. Gu then confessed that he had started to care for Mi Chong after he chased down and retrieved her hat that had been blown away by the wind. The following day, after purchasing some drinks, Mr. Gu met Mi Chong as she was leaving the train station. When Mi Chong approached him, Mr. Gu appeared confused and quickly left, avoiding a conversation. There, she tried to strike up a chat to get closer to Mr. Gu, but she was disappointed when he hurried away. It turned out that Mr. Gu did this intentionally because he was unsure about what to do, especially when it came to facing her family directly. In the evening, Mr. Gu was seen standing in front of Mi Chong's house with the intention of giving her the ice cream he had purchased earlier. However, lacking the courage to do so, he decided to go back home and place the ice cream in the refrigerator. The next day, Mr. Gu received his salary and thanked Mi Chong's father. He stood silently near the warehouse, contemplating the view. Eventually, Mr. Gu gathered the courage to return and asked Mi Chong's father for Mi Chong's phone number. When Mi Chong returned home from work, she was surprised to receive a message from Mr. Gu, informing her that he had received his salary that day. When Mr. Gu returned home, he asked Mi Chong why she hadn't found someone she really liked, despite having a complete family. Mi Chong explained that there were aspects of her parents and her two siblings that she didn't like. She felt sorry for her father, who never seemed happy, and her mother, who appeared unhappy because of her children. Because of this, they would hide big problems from their mother. Shortly after, Ki Chong got off the bus and was surprised to see them talking, and they all went home together. After finishing work, Chum He went to Mr. Gu to offer him a drink but he didn't respond. Then, Chum He decided to enter Mr. Gu's unlocked house and place the drinks he bought in the refrigerator. Suddenly, Chum He noticed a green light in one room and was shocked to find many empty bottles lined up on the floor. In the evening, Mr. Gu, who was having a drink, was approached by Mi Chong, and they had a conversation. At that time, he remembered the ice cream he had purchased and gave it to Mi Chong. As a result, she began to interact more with her friends because she felt better. Meanwhile, at home, Mr. Gu was seen cleaning his house. After finishing, he took a photo of his house and sent it to Mi Chong. When Mi Chong returned home from work, she approached Mr. Gu, who was waiting for her, and they walked together. Once they got home, he shared that he used to find it challenging to clean his house, especially getting rid of all the empty drinking bottles. However, after he got closer to Mi Chong, he felt motivated to clean up his house. The following day, Chung He, who was still curious about Mr. Gu, decided to give it a try as well. At the same time, Mr. Gu's phone kept buzzing with numerous messages, all asking about his whereabouts. From these messages, it became clear that Mr. Gu's real name is Gu Jag Yong. The next day, while everyone else was working in the field, Jad Yong and Mi Chong were cleaning the grass. Ki Chong was hanging up his clothes and observed Jad Yong giving Mi Chong a drink. After finishing drying his clothes, Ki Chong relaxed while shirtless. His mother scolded him when she saw this and Ki Chong responded by joking that Mi Chong and Jag Yong weren't working and instead, they were on a date. Later, Mi Chong messaged Jag Yong and informed him that she would be coming home late due to a club gathering. She explained that the club consisted of just three people, all of whom shared a common goal which experiencing freedom. When the gathering began, Sung Min was the first to open up and share his feelings from his notebook. Meanwhile, Mi Chong received a call from Ki Chong who informed her that he was already waiting in front of the cafe where she was. Ki Chong had intentionally waited for Mi Chong because she needed her help to carry some things from his office to his house. While talking to Mi Chong on the phone, Ki Chong scolded her, and this caught the attention of Tae Hoon, who approached her and startled her. Tae Hoon then invited Ki Chong to join the gathering since it would be ending soon. When Tae Hoon started sharing his feelings, everyone in the group fell silent, 
listening intently to his story. There he explained that he had lost his father when he was little, and his mother passed away a year later. After their funerals, Taehoon faced bullying from his friends, who gossiped about him with another friend who couldn't defend himself. Strangely, Taehoon chose to endure this mistreatment at the time because he felt weakened by the loss of both parents. That's why he is determined never to leave his child, even though he's divorced from his wife, as he knows what it's like to lose a parent. He strives to be the best father for his child, which is why he wrote in his notebook that he wanted to break free from feelings of weakness. On the way home, Ki Chong decided to ask Mi Chong for Taehoon's number, because he wanted to teach a lesson to Taehoon's former friends who had hurt him. Ki Chong obtained Taehoon's number and contacted him, expressing his intention to teach those friends a lesson. To Ki Chong's surprise, Taehoon responded that he had become close friends with them again, leaving Ki Chong astonished. Another note, Mi Chong continues her efforts to contact Chan Hyuk to ask him to take responsibility for the loan he had taken. However, when she finally got in touch with him, Chan Hyuk scolded her, leaving Mi Chong in tears. He also mentioned that he couldn't repay the debt. When Ki Chong returned home, he asked Mi Chong who had initiated their date. Mi Chong clarified that they weren't actually dating. She had simply advised Jag Yong to admire him. Meanwhile, Jag Yong received a call from someone who immediately scolded him for not answering his phone earlier. The caller mentioned that some Sikh had gone to the cemetery and met with Chairman Sin, who was inquiring about Jag Yong's whereabouts. The caller speculated that Chairman Sin was now at odds with Director Beg and suggested that they needed to act quickly to bring about Director Beg's downfall. The following day, Mi Chong took care of her friend's debt by canceling her future home deposit. She did this to keep her family from finding out about her financial trouble. Once she finished at the bank, she spotted Jag Yong waiting for her outside, and they walked together. Soon after, Jag Yong asked if Mi Chong had paid off all her debts. Mi Chong explained that she had taken care of everything and that her friend would repay her later. This response frustrated Jag Yong, and he asked for Mi Chong's friend's name and phone number, but she declined, leading him to believe that Mi Chong still had feelings for him. When they arrived at their destination, Jag Yong asked Mi Chong to wait while he prepared noodles. During this time, she expressed her frustration because she felt Jag Yong didn't support her decision. She suggested that he should just admire her, so that she could gather the courage to say what she wanted to say to her friend. Afterward, Jag Yong served the noodles and encouraged Mi Chong to eat. She sat next to him and asked him to fetch some water. While getting water for her, Jag Yong admitted that Mi Chong would be surprised if she knew who he really was. He confessed that he was quite intimidating, and even though he wasn't afraid when someone tried to harm him, he felt anxious when facing Mi Chong, making him frustrated because he seemed foolish and always looked forward to her presence. During dinner, Ki Chong, who was curious about Jag Yong and Mi Chong's relationship, asked if they really liked each other. Jag Yong simply nodded in response. On the other hand, Chung He, realizing that Ki Chong might not understand what mutual admiration meant, asked Jag Yong to clarify. Meanwhile, in the office, Mi Chong was revising her report. Later, she went to the cafe with her laptop, imagining having someone sitting beside her. Soon after, Jag Yong arrived, ordered a drink, and sat in the chair next to Mi Chong, fulfilling her imagination. Next, while Jag Yong was refueling her vehicle, she was spotted by some Sikh. Then, he immediately reported this to his boss and pointed out the truck driven by Jag Yong. However, the boss didn't believe it as he found it unlikely that Jag Yong could drive a truck. Later, when Mi Chong was in the office, she met Jun Ho to give him his report. Jun Ho asked her to leave it on the table. After she left, Jun Ho playfully teased her, saying that the ability to choose colors is something you're born with, not something you can learn. But when the boss needed to pick a color for a car design, they ended up choosing the one Mi Chong had suggested. Meanwhile, Jag Yong was waiting for Mi Chong at the train station. While waiting, he went to the convenience store to buy some snacks and drinks. When Mi Chong got off the train and rushed towards the exit, she didn't see Jag Yong there. She walked alone and almost pumped into Jag Yong, who had just come out of the convenience store. After that, they left together. While working, Jag Yong received a message from someone he had talked to earlier. He went outside and called the person back. The person said that some Sikh had seen Jag Yong while he was getting gas and that some Sikh was planning to find Jag Yong. The person also warned Jag Yong to go after Director Beg before Director Beg went after him. There, Jag Yong replied that he would do it soon but couldn't right now because he was very busy. Then he turned off his phone 
and went back to work. In the evening, Jag Yong waited for Mi Chong at the station, and when she arrived, they walked together. While walking, she started talking with him, even though she usually stayed quiet unless someone asked her. This time, she shared stories about the weather, animal carcasses on the road, and even stories about frogs crossing. The next day, Mi Chong noticed a change in herself and told her boss about it. She felt more comfortable expressing her thoughts and believed she deserved to be loved. Meanwhile, a rope used to tie things suddenly broke, causing her father's belongings to fall on the street. Her father saw this and asked Jad Yong to stop, then he came out to clean up the mess to avoid causing problems for other drivers. At the same time, Mr. Beg happened to pass by and saw Jad Yong helping. Soon after, some Sikh and Mr. Beg approached Jad Yong and took him aside to talk. There Mr. Beg said that Jad Yong was pretending to be poor and mentioned that he used to date his younger sister, who had unfortunately passed away. Afterward, Jag Yong walked back home. Mi Chong's father, who was worried about Jag Yong, kept an eye on his house and felt relieved when he saw Jag Yong return home. On the other hand, when Mi Chong arrived at Jag Yong's house, she prepared some snacks for Jag Yong and told him to take a break because he seemed really tired. When she got back home, her mother asked why Mi Chong always went to Jag Yong's house after work. There, Mi Chong innocently said they were now dating. Hearing that, her mother and Ki Chong were shocked to hear this. The next morning, as usual, Jad Yong helped Mi Chong's father with work. Her father initially thought that debt collectors had taken Jad Yong because he had made some mistakes in the past, like being someone's collateral for a bank loan. However, he was still grateful because he managed to pay off all the debts. Due to Mi Chong's father's advice and his efforts, Jad Yong was encouraged to work hard for a better life. After hearing this, Jag Yong remained silent and asked for permission to buy a new rope. Meanwhile, while Mi Chong was at Jag Yong's house, she asked him why he didn't drink today. Before he could reply, his phone suddenly rang. Mi Chong saw this and told Jag Yong to answer it, but he declined. He wanted to know why Mi Chong had told her mother that they were dating. He thought they should have kept it a secret until their agreement was over because he could have left without anyone knowing. Mi Chong, however, said that it's normal for relationships to end so there was no need to hide it. Before leaving, Mi Chong asked Jag Yong to say whatever he wanted to say. Jag Yong then shared that he had advised people who wanted to do the unthinkable to see a psychiatrist, but sadly he had chosen to jump instead and had died. When Mi Chong asked who it was, Jag Yong revealed that it was her ex-girlfriend. He also said that Mi Chong could stop him from worshipping if she asked him to. Mi Chong responded by saying that Jag Yong had never worshipped her. In a flashback to the past, it showed Jag Yong waking up after hearing Mi Chong screaming. He realized he was at Dung Mi Station and quickly left the train. It turned out that Mi Chong had successfully saved Jag Yong. If he had continued to follow some Sikh's orders to meet at Oido Station, he would have been in trouble with some tough guys. Meanwhile, after buying drinks, Jag Yong was spotted heading to a public phone. He was talking to someone who complained that Chairman Sin was waiting for them to get rid of Mr. Beg. Jag Yong responded that he was tired and hung up the phone before leaving. The next day, while Jag Yong was working in the warehouse, he noticed that some Sikh was stalking him. Realizing he had been spotted, some Sikh hid because Jag Yong had discovered him. Meanwhile, Mi Chong was having a meal with her friend and praised Jag Yong as someone who never made excuses and was true to himself. After they finished eating, Mi Chong went to Chung He's office because he wanted to give Jag Yong a new alcohol product through her. When she arrived at Jag Yong's house, she immediately handed over the alcohol from Chung-Yi. There, Jag Yong poured it into a glass and drank it. Mi Chong wondered why Jag Yong didn't say anything to her. With a smile, Jag Yong mentioned that it was the first time he had heard a woman say something like that, and he found it interesting. This response annoyed her, who commented that Jag Yong would prefer getting his arm bitten by a dog over making the woman he likes comfortable. She also felt that Jag Yong always looked down on her because she couldn't repay her debt. After that, Mi Chong left and Jag Yong could only laugh when he saw her go. In the morning, Jag Yong parked his vehicle in front of a club and went inside. Everyone there showed respect when they saw him walking in. There he went to see Mr. Beg in his room. When he arrived, Mr. Beg asked why he was visiting this time. Jag Yong replied that he couldn't sleep lately because he was annoyed that Mr. Beg had misunderstood him. Mr. Beg thought Jag Yong was pretending to be poor when in fact he was taking a break from his usual routine. Jag Yong also felt let down by Mr. Beg for betraying him in business. So he told Mr. Beg to be patient because he would return and make two choices 
which either give up his business and focus on gardening, or continue running his business to gain power. At that time, Jag Yong warned Mr. Beg not to bother him or upset him until he actually came back. As he walked out, Jag Yong called some Sikh and shouted at him. He instructed some Sikh to place an order with Sampo Apple Waste. At that time, some Sikh, worried about Jag Yong's misunderstanding, explained that he hadn't sent a message to Jag Yong to go to a widow station because it was Mr. Beg who had done so. Jag Yong already knew this because Yan had informed him. On the other hand, when Mi Chong got back home from work, she received a call from Jag Yong, who said he was waiting for her. She quickly met up with him, and they left in his car. At that time, Chung Yi, who noticed Jag Yong's arrival, approached him with the car keys he had taken from the bathroom. There, Chung Yi pleaded with Jag Yong to confirm that he indeed had the car. Upon hearing this, Jag Yong immediately took Chung Yi to his apartment and searched for the car in the basement. Chung Yi was amazed and delighted when he saw his car there, and he praised Jag Yong for helping him find it. Feeling happy, Chung Yi decided to drive the car. After leaving a convenience store, Mi Chong continued her journey in Jag Yong's car, now driven by Chung Yi. Even when they were stopped by the police, Chung Gi gained respect from others because he was driving a luxury car. When they arrived home, Mi Chong's mother asked about the car parked in front of their house. Du Wan quickly explained that it belonged to his friend, who had entrusted it to him as he was going abroad. Jung Hoon, upon seeing the luxurious car, became curious about Jag Yong's real job. The next day at the office, Mi Chong, who was delivering her report, received a comment from Jun Ho about her clothing. Jun Ho intentionally made a remark to embarrass Mi Chong, mentioning that it had been a while since he saw a woman wearing trousers that were too long, which was affecting his vision. Mi Chong could only stay silent upon hearing this. While in the elevator, Jun Ho asked Mi Chong about the activities of the Liberation Club she started. Mi Chong explained that the club was about wanting to break free from annoying people, and Jun Ho fell silent immediately. Later, while having a drink with Jag Yong, Mi Chong opened up about the burdens in her heart. She mentioned that Jun Ho had a good position in the office but was insignificant outside of work. In fact, their office had offered employees a chance to resign because they were reducing staff. However, the people expected to stay ended up leaving because they received job offers elsewhere, while those expected to leave stayed because no one wanted to hire them. That's why Jun Ho was still at the office. There, Jag Yong commanded that weak people can be quite cruel and pitiful. He suggested that Mi Chong invite Jun Ho to her home for some lessons in the fields. Afterward, they had noodles together. Jag Yong opened the window, enjoying the breeze blowing in. After the meal, Jag Yong mentioned that it was the first time he had lived in a house where the wind changed direction at night, and you could see the moon directly. They went outside, and he playfully threw stones at a lamp, causing it to go out. While admiring the view, Jag Yong noticed that Mi Chong was cold. Then he hugged her, rubbed her back, and they shared a kiss. In the evening, Jag Yong woke up to a noise from outside. He saw two suspicious individuals inspecting Mi Chong's father's pickup truck and installing something in it. In the morning, Jag Yong noticed a tracking device under his car. Curious, he decided to test it by going to different places to see if it was working. While doing so, he noticed a car approaching and hid, waiting for it to arrive. When the car got there, Jag Yong quickly approached it and broke one of the car's windows. There, he grabbed the person inside and demanded that they contact Mr. Beg. It turned out they were sent by their leader, Shin. Jag Yong was then invited to meet with leader Shin. After a long time with no news, Chairman Sin initially thought that Mr. Beg might have harmed Jag Yong. He felt relieved when he found out that Jag Yong was still alive. Soon after, Shin instructed Jag Yong to return once his break was over, as they needed a strong person in a high position to avoid appearing weak to others. Shin believed Mr. Beg currently held that position, and he wanted to prevent others from underestimating his leadership. However, for now, Jag Yong chose to continue living in Sampo Village. Next, Mi Chong and Jag Yong sat together by the river. There, he playfully mentioned that he would worship Mi Chong, and they both shared a smile. Meanwhile, Jag Yong's colleague Yan was spotted at Mi Chong's father's shop. He peered inside, and Mi Chong's mother noticed him and asked what he was looking for. Yan explained that he was searching for Jag Yong because they were friends. Upon hearing this, she invited him inside their house. Afterward, Yan was spotted sipping the drinks and browsing through family photos on display. It wasn't long before Jag Yong and Mi Chong's father arrived. 
They greeted each other with a handshake and sat down to have a meal together. Yan then expressed to Mi Chong's father how impressed he was with Jad Yang, but her father remained silent. After that, Yan went on to ask Jad Yang to return soon because the people who depended on him were facing difficulties. When Yan asked about Jad Yang's girlfriend, Jad Yang couldn't respond and simply looked away. Meanwhile, at work, Jai Hui informed Mi Chong that a new member had joined the Liberation Club, and it turned out to be Young Ki. At that time, Young Ki mentioned that she had been interested in joining after participating in club activities, but only mustered the courage to do so now. Later, Juno announced to his colleagues that there would be a design contest in the office. He encouraged Jai Hui and Su Jin to do their best while seeming to dismiss Mi Chong. Bo Rum, aware of the situation, encouraged Mi Chong to win first place so she wouldn't feel inferior. When his father was at the store buying some tools, his father spotted Chung Hee driving a car. When he returned home, his father asked Chung Hee whose car he was using. Chung Hee replied that it belonged to his friend. However, his father didn't believe him and continued to press for an answer. Eventually, he revealed that the car actually belonged to Jag Yong. Upon hearing that, his father fell silent. Soon after, Chung Hee went on to explain that Jag Yong was a wealthy person and had allowed him to use the car. But his father was not happy about it and forbade Chung Hee from using the car, emphasizing that it didn't belong to him. However, this upset Chung Hee, and he protested to his father, even pounding the table. His father mentioned that the car was very expensive, worth hundreds of millions of won. Shortly after, Jag Yong arrived, and the situation appeared quite awkward. The following day, Chung Hee, unsure about how to fix the damage to the car, was encouraged by Du Wen be honest with Jag Yong. At that time, Du Wen believed that Jag Yong likely had insurance for his car. Despite his doubts, Chung Hee eventually mustered the courage to tell Jag Yong the truth. However, when Jag Yong came to inspect the car, Chung Hee quickly ran away, fearing that Jag Yong might chase after him. Chung Hee, who had been running, finally reached Dung Mi Station. As soon as the train arrived, he hurriedly boarded it. Interestingly, Jag Yong also got on the same train. However, he had no plans to catch Chung Hee cause he was actually headed to Seoul to meet Yan. Upon arriving in Seoul, Jag Yong told Yan about a man who constantly lied and annoyed him. Jag Yong also believed that this man had left his business behind. To his surprise, the man who was selling drugs to club goers was none other than Mr. Beg. Soon after, Yan informed their leader, Shin, that Jag Yong would be returning. The following day, the police came to the club to arrest Mr. Beg, but he managed to escape. Knowing that it was Jag Yong's doing, Mr. Beg contacted him and asked him to wait. While walking with Mi Chong, Jag Yong mentioned that he was going to Seoul. When she asked why, Jag Yong didn't give an answer. In the evening, Mi Chong cried in her room and decided to visit Jag Yong's house. She found Jag Yong packing some drink bottles. Mi Chong suggested that they occasionally call each other and meet once or twice a month. Jag Yong, however, advised her to stay in Seoul and lead a normal life among people. According to him, a normal life means having desires similar to others and living like other women who deserve happiness. Mi Chong agreed to continue living this way. The next day, Mi Chong's father, aware that Jag Yong was quitting, told him to return if he ever changed his mind and wanted to work again. On the other hand, Mr. Beg was fleeing from the police. He reached a dead end and attempted to jump over a road divider, but he was impaled by the construction iron. He lay injured and continued to cough up blood, eventually succumbing to his injuries and passing away. Meanwhile, Mi Chong was feeling sad and tried to contact Jag Yong, but his phone number was no longer reachable. At the funeral home, he seems happy about Mr. Beg's death, as he couldn't believe that Mr. Beg had simply died like that. A year has passed, and they've each been busy with their own activities, but they still remember each other. Then, Jag Yong standing in front of Mi Chong's house, wanting to meet her. However, her mother unexpectedly comes out, which surprises him. It turns out that she is the new wife of Mi Chong's father, because Mi Chong's mother had passed away while resting in her room. Her father explained that his wife was cooking rice at the time, and when Chung Yee saw that it was burning, he tried to wake her up, but sadly found that she had already passed away. Panicked, Chung Hee ran to inform his father about his mother's death, leaving his sandals behind. The three children were deeply saddened by this, and they decided to move to Seoul. After they left, their father's new wife and her children took care of him. He then gave Jag Yong Mi Chong's new phone number. After this, Jag Yong contacted Mi Chong and arranged to meet somewhere. 
When they saw each other again after such a long time, they felt a bit awkward. Li Chong smiled and commented on Jag Yang's long hair, to which he replied that he thought he looked more handsome with this hairstyle. They then walked together and continued their conversation. At that time, Li Chong, who doesn't know Jag Yang's real name, asked who he really was. Jad Yong then replied that his real name was Gu Jad Yong. Mi Chong also asked about how he got her new phone number. Jad Yong explained that he had visited her house a few days ago. Mi Chong then realized that Jad Yong had found out about her mother's passing and her father's remarriage. Afterward, they decided to go for a walk in the market. While enjoying their food, Jad Yong received a call from some Sikh. He asked Mi Chong to wait for him because he needed to meet some Sikh. Upon reaching their destination, Jag Yong went inside to check financial reports. Later, Jag Yong and some Sikh went to a club. When they arrived, Jag Yong witnessed a pimp being attacked by someone with a bottle, causing him to bleed from the forehead. The woman was furious because she had been fired from her job after Jag Yong came to collect her debt. Seeing this, he became very angry and confronted the woman against the wall. Jag Yong then stated that he would be tough on people who didn't want to take responsibility for their debts. He went into the assistant's room and searched through everything, managing to find money under a chair. Afterward, he reunited with Mi Chong at the restaurant. Observing the wound on Jag Yong's cheek, Mi Chong remarked that he had transformed in just an hour and a half. While they walked, she mentioned that Chan Hyuk still hadn't paid her back the money he owed her, even though he had thrown an extravagant wedding celebration. When Mi Chong asked him to repay the debt, Chan Hyuk scolded her which frustrated her so much that she accidentally broke the glass she was holding. They ended up spending the night together in the apartment. The following day, Chunggi informed his father that he would be visiting him next week. Meanwhile, Ki Chong, feeling uncertain about her relationship, decided to cut her hair. When Mi Chong returned home from work, she unexpectedly ran into Chan Hyuk, the man who owed her money. Later, Mi Chong was surprised when Jang Yong arrived, holding her in his arms. Once at home, he offered to help her collect her debt from Chan Hyuk, but she declined, wanting to prove that Chan Hyuk was a deceitful man who had taken off with all her money. Mi Chang mentioned that she saw Jad Yong as a refuge because she had chosen not to harbor hatred, which made Jad Yong happy. A few days later, Mi Chang, Ki Chang, and Chang He returned to their hometown of Sanpo. There, Du Wen warmly welcomed them because it was their father's birthday that day. The three siblings brought gifts for their dad. Mi Chong smiled as she looked at her childhood notebook. During the meal, their father told them that if they couldn't live together in Seoul, they could each choose to live on their own. Chan Hyuk, who met Mi Chong again, finally found the courage to start a conversation. He mentioned that he would start paying off his debt in installments next month. Hearing that, Mi Chong was visibly happy, knowing she had made Chan Hyuk feel like a loser. Back at home, Tae Hoon brought Ki Chong a rose cut from a tree. Meanwhile, Chung He, who had intended to attend a history class about Seoul, accidentally entered a class discussing death and funerals. At first, he thought about leaving but stayed after the teacher explained the topic. The scene then shows how Mi Chong and Jag Young's lives have changed after experiencing love. They feel happier than before because their hearts are filled with love for each other. The series ends. The moral lesson from this series is when life gives you a mysterious neighbor. Make sure to investigate and consider a date cause they might just turn out to be your ticket to wealth to pay your debt.